Well, hello friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I have a fun tissue paper challenge for you. I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda. This is my Oliver and we are so happy you stopped by today. And if you're returning, well, you know we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew. This paper I got from Amazon. It is removable wallpaper. This is uh, some tissue paper that I printed this image on and I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. I'm going to use this plaque I got from Hobby Lobby. It was like 75% off after Christmas, so it was very inexpensive. And then I'm going to use one of these wood canvases that come from, it's a three pack from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to start off by painting that small plaque and uh, with the cashew, and then I paint the sides and the back of that uh wood canvas with the cashew as well. And then I'm just going, I cut out a piece of this removable wallpaper to fit inside of my wood canvas and I am just laying it down in place just like you see me doing right here. And oh my goodness, you guys, I absolutely love this paper. I originally got it from Timu. Um, I ran out of it and I saw that Amazon had it and I just had to get some, <laughs> get some more at least. So here I'm just trimming down. I had a little uh, extra there that was running along the side and I just trimmed it off. Now I am just adding some Mod Podge onto my smaller plaque here. I'm just gonna go all over my plaque with the Mod Podge and then once I have that on there, I'm gonna set it aside to dry, I believe. And I'm just taking my time here, rubbing on my Mod Podge. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm sure you guys know how to put on Mod Podge. Um, okay, so this is how I printed on the tissue paper. I took some tissue paper, I cut it down, and I'm going to add some double stick tape all along the top and the bottom of my regular copy paper. Now, I tried this once before a few months ago, and I only put a few little pieces of tape down and my uh, tissue paper got jammed up in my printer so I decided to try it again and this time using uh, tape all over, along the top and the bottom. So here I'm just really carefully putting the bottom part of the tissue paper down on the tape and then trying to smooth it out as much as possible. I am going to um, trim it down so that the tissue paper is the same size as that paper and then I I'm going to add a little bit of tape on the sides just to kind of help keep the sides down as well. Now I was going to make some coasters of Oliver like this, but um, I was having all kinds of difficulties. But one of the things I've found is you really want to try to eliminate as many wrinkles as you can because then you, you get ink splotches if you don't. So here I'm just trimming out going all around my um, picture here. Now I got this picture off of Canva and I should have sprayed it before I use this with a spray adhesive or not a spray adhesive, um, a protector and I didn't. But once my plaque was dry, I placed my tissue paper down on my plaque and covered it with my regular parchment paper and went over it with the heat, my heat press. So that way it reactivates that, uh, Mod Podge so that the tissue paper, um, stays on it. And now I'm just covering the tissue paper with my Mod Podge. Now, as I was going to say, um, I when I printed this, I think I had my picture too close to the side because it did kind of make one side of his horn a little thinner than the other. It, it's really not that noticeable until you look at it real closely, but I still love the way this turned out. So I'm taking some of my braided jute cord here and I'm just going to hot glue this all around the inside part of this wood canvas. Now I love doing this. Um, I'm mainly doing this in case uh, my cutting is not always straight um, to cover any raw edges. But honestly, I it's for that reason, but it's also because I just think it really gives it a nice finished high end look when you do this. And so after I had that all done, I'm just taking my wood glue here and then I'm gonna take some hot glue, but I'm just gonna put the wood glue in the middle of my sign and then the hot glue all around the edge and then I'm gonna attach this to the middle of my wood canvas here on top of that wallpaper. And 
there it goes. I love this. So after that, I decided to go ahead and go around the smaller sign with that braided jute cord as well. So I'm just gonna hot glue that all the way around this sign too. And then after that, I am taking some of that braided jute twine as well, tying knots in it, and then I'm gonna hot glue it above those holes because I forgot to use filler before I painted it. So I'm just gonna tie that there, but I love the way it looked. It gives it a country rustic kind of look, and I love it. So I'm taking some of this black uh, gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and making a bow. I'm gonna dovetail the ends, and then I'm gonna hot glue that right above that uh, cute little highland cow and then i'm going to staple in the hanger now you guys you can do this with any image that you find you can download it if you have a printer and print on tissue and i absolutely love how this came out i think it is adorable and when i showed my friend kathy joe with kathy joe diy she's like oh can i have it and i said you bet girl so this is going to her <laughs> so today is the tissue paper diy collaboration with some great women these are all very talented women and I really enjoy participating with them. So make sure you check out the playlist to see what kinds of inspirations everyone came up with using tissue paper for you. Uh, I think you'll have a great time watching everybody's videos. Okay, so here's DIY number two. So for this DIY, I'm gonna use my Waverly chalk paints in the color white and the color, color celery. I'm gonna use this home sign from Dollar Tree. This uh, tissue paper I also got from Dollar Tree. And then of course, one of these little trays from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm gonna start off by painting the front of that tray all white. And once that was all dry, I am going to take my celery with a little sponge brush and I'm just lightly going over those little bumps that are on the top of the tray. I just kind of wanted to give it a little bit of detail um, so that it wasn't so white. And then uh, I'm just gonna go over the sides here and you just wanna do a very light touch on them. And after I had that all done, I took my Mod Podge and I just covered the inside of my tray with the Mod Podge. And then I am just going to lay my tissue paper. I cut it out to fit in the middle and I'm just gonna lay that down right inside on top of that Mod Podge. Now, the tissue paper is not as um, delicate as the napkins because as you can see, I was able to pull some of it up to try and get it straight. Um, having my ceiling fan on above me really didn't help me in this area, but I finally got it straight. And then I'm just gonna use some uh, plastic wrap here to just smooth it all out and get it all adhered to that Mod Podge. And then once I had all the wrinkles out and all smooth, I went over it again. I think I'm gonna show you, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, with my Mod Podge, just so that it has that protective coating over the paper. And then while that was drying, I took my home sign and some of this celery, and I'm just painting it all of, around the front of my sign, as well as all around the letters. Then I d just felt like it was still too white. It needed something more. So I took a really small brush, and I am just painting um, all around that uh, where the tissue paper and the tray meet. And then I'm like, okay, it still needs a little bit more. So I went ahead and went down the each corner of the tray. And I just really feel like it helps, helps this tray pop a little bit more as well as the tissue paper. Or maybe it's just that I didn't like it being so white. I don't know, but I really liked this. So once I had that done, then I'm gonna take my wood glue here and put it all along the back of my home sign. And then once I have that home sign done, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on some areas where I did not add the wood glue. And of course that's uh, for the immediate hold where the wood glue is for the permanent hold. And then I'm just gonna put that right in the middle of my tray, just like that. And then I took some of this ribbon, this is from Dollar Tree, and I am going to make a bow, just like you see me doing right there. <laughs> and then I am did I made the bow doing the awareness ribbon sign and then scrunched it up in the middle. And here I am tying a, 
uh, some twine around it to keep that shape and then I'm just going to dovetail the ends which means you just fold those ends together and cut at an angle and then I'm just going to hot glue it to the top part of my tray and I absolutely love how this came out it's so pretty so simple Ah, oh, but I do love it. You could put a hanger on it if you wanted to hang it, or you could just leave it as is, or use like a plate holder, which is what I was going to do, but I couldn't find mine. <laughs> okay, I want to just give a big shout out to all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. We are almost to 14,500, which means we are close to 15,000. Once we get there, we are going to have a giveaway. And then if you guys would like to support my channel, you can give me that thumbs up, comment, watch those ads. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go. And then if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find the links to my social media accounts as well as my affiliate accounts in the description box as well. Okay, so it is a time for a celebration of your recreation. And look at these beautiful pieces May made. She is with Craft Away With Me on YouTube. Check her out if you haven't already. We have a collaboration coming up next week, I think it is, a couple weeks. So look out for that. And then Jane, she made all these beautiful pieces. I love them all. You did, or not Jane, Jamie. I'm sorry, you did an amazing job. So if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase for you, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger and I'm always more than happy to showcase them here for you. Okay so here's DIY number three and of course I had to add a farm house animal right? <laughs> okay I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I'm going to use one of these metal chickens from Dollar Tree, some more of this tissue paper from Dollar Tree and then this uh, charcuterie board. I can't say it right. And I got from um, Walmart for $5. So I'm going to start off by painting that chicken white. That way um, you have a nice backing when you add the tissue paper. Once it was all dry, I'm going to cover it again with Mod Podge. And then I am going to I do set it aside to dry. I wasn't planning on setting it aside to dry. I was just going to put my tissue paper on it because it's metal. But since I had wasn't thinking and I let it dry I decided to put the metal on top of a towel because it's going to get hot and then I'm just doing the parchment paper over it with my heat press to reactivate that Mod Podge and then after that I'm just going to cover it with Mod Podge and let it dry just to, so that it has that protective layer on it and when you do this on metal you want to really make sure you get those ends well too otherwise it will peel up from it and then here I'm trying the fire method but it wasn't working and I think it was mainly because of my ceiling fan that is above me. That's the only bummer about doing this in the summer is that ceiling fan and I have to have it on because I'm just too hot if I don't. <laughs> so I finally, I just took my, um, I cut it off and used my finger sander to get all the rest of it off and then I had a little bit of the burn mark so I thought, okay, well I'm just gonna go around the edge with some of this uh, antique wax and a paper towel and I just really loved the way it was looking with that paper towel was giving it more of that rustic vibe. So I decided to go ahead and cover the whole thing with it. And I just love it. I love the way it looks. But that's me. So if you don't like the rustic look, you could always just leave it plain if you have that same tissue paper. And then I'm just going to go uh, over the back with my, um, I think this is fix all glue here I'm using all around it and then I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue around the edges. Now we all know hot glue and uh, metal don't like each other but it was just for video purposes um, so that I could get this done fast and take my pictures. <laughs> so once I have this down here, I did end up putting um, something heavy on it just to kind of keep it held down. But in the meantime, I am going to hot glue some ribbon all around the bottom and the top. And then I'm going to go over it with some of my twine as well. I just really like the way that looked. Now, you guys may have noticed my intro and everything is a little different. I am having an issue with YouTube and my editing software company and the music. So um, until we get that resolved, I may not have music. I may not have any more music. We'll see what happens. But um, so yeah, no music. And it's kind of weird because I already had this video all ready to go and I had to take it down and redo my voiceover without music. It's not been very fun. But you know what? It is what it is. And I know there's nothing to stress about because we'll get it all figured out. So <laughs> in the meantime, there's no music and there may not be in the future. We'll have to see.
but here I'm putting some more of that ribbon on the top and then I'm going to add um, the braided jute cord on top. I think I do. I don't know. Like I said, I finished this like a week ago, you guys. So I'm trying to remember what <laughs> I did ahead of time. Um, and for any of you that may be wondering, my grandsons made it here. I'm having a great time with them. We had to have gingerbread pancakes for sure this morning for breakfast. They told me that that was a must. That wasn't even a question. They knew they were going to get Mimi's gingerbread pancakes. So <laughs> I was very happy to oblige them and it was just so fun just watching them uh, eat it and watching the new memories we we're making. Ugh, I'm getting teary eyed already. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay. For those of you who maybe haven't been around for a while, uh, that's something that before we moved, we used to always do every month. They would come stay with me and I would make them gingerbread pancakes. Even when I tried to make them something different, they would say, no, it had to be gingerbread pancakes. So <laughs> so there, I, as you can see, I just put a little bow on it and I'm just adding a little hanger, although I'm probably not going to hang this. I'm just going to have it in my kitchen. Um, but that's all there was for this one. Super easy, but I think it's really cute. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And which one was your favorite today? And are you going to be recreating any? And are you going to try the tissue paper method? Oh, I, I can't wait to try. I'm going to make some coasters of Oliver with it and I can't wait and I'll show you guys when I do. But anyways, here is the final reveal, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out all the wonderful ladies videos to get some more inspiration. And I will be back again on Saturday with a fun video. So until then, you guys have a blessed week and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.